Welcome to today's lesson on cellular boundaries. Today we're going to talk about two major boundaries on the cell. First of all, we have the cell wall, and second, we have the cell membrane. The cell membrane is going to be made up of two different parts. Those two parts are going to be the lipid bilayer and the membrane proteins. We're going to go into detail on all of those. So first of all, let's talk about the cell wall. The cell wall is an extremely rigid structure. It actually helps provide support for uh, plant cells because plant cells don't have a skeleton like animals do. So it helps provide them with that structure to be able to stand upright. That's how we can have trees that are so tall, okay, because of the cell walls. So it does provide support for those cells. It's located on the outside of the cell membrane. So if you see a picture of a cell or a diagram of a cell and it has two structures on the outside of it, the outside one is going to be the cell wall and the inside one is going to be the cell membrane. The cell wall is also very porous. The purpose of the cell wall is not to control what goes in and out of the cell. That's the cell membrane. The purpose of the cell wall is just to provide support. So it's going to allow things to move through it very easily. It's going to be the cell membrane that controls what goes in and out of the cell. So it's very porous. It allows things to move in and out. And finally, it is not located in animal cells. You will not find a cell wall in animal cells. Okay. So a cell wall is just there for structure and support. It's not for protection. And it's not in animal cells. The cell membrane has a much more in-depth structure. Okay, there's multiple parts to it. First of all, it's going to control what enters and exits the cell. It's going to keep certain things out. It's going to allow other things in. It takes and controls and protects that cell from anything that shouldn't be going into that cell. Okay. It's what's called a lipid bilayer. Okay, so two layers and lipid meaning fat, so waterproof coating. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a minute. I'm going to break that down. And I'm also going to take, we're also going to take a look at all four membrane proteins, the transport proteins, receptor proteins, enzyme proteins, and anchor proteins. So let's take a look, a little more detail. The lipid bilayer consists of two parts. It has what's called a phosphate head, and the phosphate is a polar molecule. So if you remember from us talking before, polar means that it likes water. It's called hydrophilic, so it likes water, water loving, okay? Phosphate head is polar, it's water loving, so it will mix with anything, else, anything that is a polar molecule. We also have two lipid tails that come off of the phosphate head. And the two lipid tails are nonpolar, so they are not going to want to mix with water or anything else that's polar. And this is actually what helps to protect the cell. Now, if you look closely at this bilayer, we have two layers. The inside and outside of the cell actually have the phosphate heads to them. And the inside of the cell membrane are our lipid tails. And this is important for the protection of the cell. Here's why. Anything that is polar, anything that's a polar molecule, will be able to make it through this layer right here. But what's going to happen is as soon as it reaches these nonpolar tails, it's going to be kicked out. So it's going to bounce off and not be able to make it into the cell. Same thing with something trying to get out of the cell. Pol this layer here is polar. So if we have water molecules or anything else that's polar, it's going to make its way through the polar heads, but it's not going to reach through the polar tails. And so what happens is it bounces off those polar tails, and as it bounces off, it stays to the inside of the cell if this is in and this is out. So nothing can really get through here that's polar. The second thing are your nonpolar molecules, okay? So if this is polar and this is polar, we then have some nonpolar molecules. And let's say our nonpolar molecules, let me grab another color marker here. Our nonpolar molecules don't like water. So what's going to happen is even before they reach this layer right here, they're going to bounce off. So they're going to reach this polar molecule layer, 
and it's going to bounce off and it's going to stay on the outside of the cell. Same thing here, if this is non-polar, it's going to reach the polar area and it's going to be bounced off and it's not going to allow it to, to get out of the cell. So the lipid bilayer is a, an extreme protection layer for the cell. Pretty much nothing can get through your lipid bilayer. The, however, things do need to get into and out of the cell. So the things that need to get into and out of the cell can get there through proteins that are in the cell membrane. So we have four different types of proteins that are within the cell membrane. The first one are our transport proteins. And we have two types of transport proteins. We have carrier proteins and we have channel proteins. Now the transport proteins have in the center of them this opening. And so things can move through those transport proteins. A carrier protein will only carry specific materials into or out of the cell. So it has to fit perfectly into that structure for it to be able to move into and out of the cell. A channel protein on the other, on the other hand is more like a doorway. And so if that doorway is open, anything for the most part is going to be able to make it through that channel protein. However, there are not a lot of channel proteins, so that's what helps protect the cell. But channel proteins let pretty much anything that's polar move through because it's there. So that's how water would get through, move through channel proteins. Or we have carrier proteins that only carry specific things through the cell membrane, okay, and into and out of the cell. Our second membrane protein are receptor proteins. And you'll notice these have the carbohydrates on the outside. This carbohydrate structure actually gets messages from the outside of the cell and then sends those messages into the cell and then there's going to be, those messages are going to be read by the cell and then the cell's going to have to do something, okay? For instance, it could be that what's happening on the outside of the cell is that there's not enough salt on the outside of the cell, okay? So the message on the outside of the cell is going to be send us some salts it's going to come through and then some of those carrier proteins are going to open up so that we can allow some of those salts to go through that need to go through so we can balance our equilibrium and maintain homeostasis okay homeostasis stable environment we want that to happen so to keep that from happening uh, to keep us from changing too much we have these receptor proteins that are going to tell the cell this needs to be done or this needs to be done. Okay. Our third type of protein is an enzyme protein. And this is going to carry out chemical reactions that either need to happen right just inside the cell or just outside the cell. Okay. So those enzyme proteins are going to help chemical reactions happen. And a lot of times they start working because I've gotten a message from the receptor proteins. Okay, so they help carry out chemical reactions. And finally, we have anchor proteins. And those anchor proteins are going to help our body and our cells stay in place, stay where they need to be. We're going to have all the way around our body, we have these, these cytoskeleton pieces. Okay, we have these pieces that are going to keep the cells in place. And so the anchors are kind of like a bungee cord. And it's going to anchor to the outside of the cell and it's gonna to anchor to this piece on the inside of the cell. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep that cell membrane in place because it's very fluid, it likes to move around, okay? So, to wrap it up real quick, we have two different, um, two different cell boundaries. The first one is a cell wall, which is only in uh, plant cells, along with um, prokaryotes will have a cell wall also. And that's only for structure, for um, protection we have our cell membrane. Our cell membrane is going to be in every single cell. That is one thing that every cell has no matter what type of a cell it is. Okay, And what happens is that cell membrane controls what goes into and out of the cell and then it helps with these different types of proteins that are inside the cell.